All right, where do you want to sit? Okay, you all right? Oh my goodness, there's a huge glare on my glasses. <sighs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. I know, two weeks in a row, spinning videos. Um, I just plan on spinning a lot lately, and kind of trying to spin my stash down. <laughs> That's hilarious, right? Last week I spun a whole box from Paradise. I wanna show you guys something really crazy, though. Okay, so these are the two fibers we got in the Paradise. Oh, wait, before I do that, I got something I gotta um, add to this. I've been waiting specifically till I did a video with the blending board, and I wanna say hi to Jay. Jay watches with his mom, and she wrote me a letter and told me like a little story about how they started watching together, and I just wanna say hi to him, and I am so excited to see what you do with your wool coming up in the future, Jay. He, I guess she, t what she told me was that they watched a blending board video and he was like, we gotta try that. So I just think that is the coolest. So I just wanted to say hi to you. I wish I could give you a big hug, Jay. Thank you for watching. I just love that story. You know, I was a single mom with my son from like four to seven-ish. It's a unique experience that I just really relate to. So it actually really warmed my heart and kind of made me get like a little choked up when she wrote me the note. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Okay, we're gonna go to the spinning now. This is the one I'm gonna work with first. I debated on this. Really what I wanna do is do a self-striping yarn with this, okay? And people ask me a lot, like why would you take a blended top and make it into roll eggs? And that's what I'm gonna do. And one of the reasons, there's more than one reason, but one of the reasons is so you can make it stripe you end up spinning it in a configuration that's similar to spinning from the fold, which kind of keeps chunks of color together in a way. And we've talked about that in other videos, I know. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I, I debated at first, I was like, should I try to separate it? Um, I don't, I don't think I love that idea. First, I have to move my tack stuff, which I still haven't finished by the way. We talked about this in the live video, so some of you guys have already heard this, but my career before this, my real life career, because obviously this isn't real life, this is totally real life. My real life career before this, and what I went to college for, is finance. I know. What happened was I worked in like private corporate accounting, but I always did like my own taxes and stuff because it does help you understand how it all works. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I had the opportunity to work in public accounting and I did that for, gosh, probably only about nine months. And I found out that I hated working with the public. So, <laughs> who knew? And people who brought in garbage bags full, not garbage bags, like paper bags, grocery bags full of receipts and shoe boxes full of receipts used to make me really frustrated. So I figured that public accounting wasn't for me, but I've always done my own taxes. All right, I'm gonna switch the view to the blending board. Here we go. This is a thicker layer than I normally use on my blending board, so I am using the brush that came with it, and I'm basically pushing it down inside and then pulling the brush down. 
So if you are going to do this, just be aware that it is gonna be thicker and it's a little bit more challenging just to get it down in the teeth. If you are having a hard time pushing it down into the blending board with your brush, you can always spread your roving or your top out more thinly. I was just trying to keep these kind of color blocks together. I'm gonna wind this whole board up into one giant full leg. A roll leg would be something different made on hand cards. Um, and you will see me draft a bit as I do this using my thumbs as a brace against the board. When you are drafting, it's really easy to wind this too tight. So you'll actually see me kind of let it go and loosen it because when it gets really tight, it can be hard to spin and it can also be hard to get your sticks out at the end. And at the top, generally what I will do is pull it right off and then lower it against the teeth so I have a more firm foundation to pull against so it'll wind up really nice and pretty at the end. I absolutely love these. I'm gonna show you what they look like and I'm gonna do it three more times. It only took four of these big faux legs to do the whole four ounces of fiber. Almost every time I make either a roll log or a full leg or whatever you want to call this, I will pre-draft it. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-draft this and you'll kind of start to see how you get these like watercolory sort of color shifting stripes as I do it. It's just so much fun to watch.
All right, so I said that I was gonna talk a little bit about 2022. Okay, while I spin, it's probably gonna make a little bit of noise, but hopefully it won't be too bad. I guess I need to start out by saying like, first of all, this has this channel is like so much fun for me and I have met so many friends here and it's been so much, it's just been really good during the pandemic and everything. I think for a lot of other people too. I don't think it's just me. But when I first started out, I really just wanted to document what I was doing and kind of like be able to look back on my journey and enjoy that. And um, over time, because it was growing and because I opened the shop and stuff, I have felt like I needed to keep trying to grow and expand and do more of what other people wanted and then that that's how you grow and all those things. The beginning of this year, I just really kind of realized that I wasn't doing what I really want to be doing anymore. And I enjoy the shop a lot, so I'm not, I'm gonna keep the shop. And also, I mean, I in a way, I kind of feel like I have to because <laughs> I make more stuff than I could ever use. Like I dye more fiber than I could ever spin and all that. So in a way I just kind of feel like I have to keep the shop because it's like a channel to get, you know, the dish towels, extra dish towels that I make and all the fiber that I dye, which I really enjoy doing um, out into the world and not just piling up in my house because it, it totally would. I could never spin all that. My plan for 2022 was I did all this research and I was planning on moving or opening up on a platform where I could teach classes and we could have a community that wasn't based around Facebook because there's so many people who don't want to be on Facebook right now. And um, also my shop could be connected to it and uh, I did a ton of research trying to find out the right platform that would do kind of like everything that I wanted or everything that I thought we wanted for it and um, spent some time like trying things out and getting things set up and everything but I do realize that the Facebook group is growing and growing and growing and I think that I'm gonna let that be our community and leave it alone um, meaning not work on another one. The platform that I was looking at would have allowed memberships and donations and stuff like that. So in a way it's kind of like Patreon, but it did more. I love you guys. I want to keep hanging out. I want to keep making videos of what I'm doing and letting like creativity um, flow where it needs to flow instead of trying to think as much about what everybody else wants from me. I really just realized that like there has been so much pressure at times to do things that other people wanted or the way other people wanted them or at the speed other people wanted them. And I'm losing sight of why I started this channel from the very beginning. I don't even really think of myself as a content creator, which probably sounds super weird, but I just think of myself as like a documenter of my own journey and an encourager and maybe that is what, I don't know. Maybe that's what everyone's doing. But um, I really just wanna follow my own star and I hope that you guys will keep hanging out and keep like growing the community on Facebook. It has been such a really cool thing to watch people become friends off Facebook and people become friends with each other and support each other, encourage each other, give each other advice. Like it's been really awesome to see that there. So I, I want that to continue. I'm gonna continue to participate. Like nothing's really gonna change. If anything, the only thing that's changing is that I was putting tons and tons and tons of energy into growing or into, into something that like I'm not doing anymore. So I will have more time and energy for here. You know, I'm kind of not even sure how you guys are gonna feel about this, but like I said, I was just trying to make decisions best I could for everybody, but there is no way to make everybody happy either. Um, there's no way to get my pace on pace with what everyone else wants. And so many of you guys have been like, hey, listen, like do your life the way that you want it to be. 
a lot has changed this year with John's mom being sick and John's business is really, really busy. So all that said, I am also planning to still release some classes. It will be available on Facebook. And I appreciate all of you. I don't just encourage you. I feel like you guys have encouraged me a ton, supported me a ton. I appreciate it so much and I love you guys. I still have one more of the, those big faux legs to spin and then we're gonna be plying. I am going to um, chain ply it so that I get to keep the stripes. Thanks for listening to my babble. Good morning. We are gonna chain ply this. You can kind of see, well, I think you can see, that um, it goes through like a color shifting stripe and I wanna preserve that. So yeah, that's gonna be the plan. That was kind of the plan all along. And I really do like the way that those like kind of watercolory, you know, shift into the next color stripes came out and I'm so excited to have this done. We're done. There is another partial. I'm gonna go ahead and wind this using my Swift. I'm sorry, the table's a mess. I've got stuff that I need to take pictures of today. I have packages going out for the shop, so I know it's a mess. So I ended up with 504 yards. So I'm gonna write it on here. And last time after my spinning video, I think it was Kim was like, hey, where are those labels? Because I dyed the yarn with the label on and the label stays perfect, doesn't dye or anything. So I used Tyvek bracelets. I'll link to them again below that I get off Amazon and I use the white ones. I just write on them and I use Sharpie when I write, but even ballpoint, like you can wash it, you can dye it, you can do anything and you can still read it afterwards. It doesn't go anywhere on the Tyvek. So they're really cool because they're made for you to like wear at a resort, water place, whatever, be printed on and stay good like the whole time you're wearing it, even in the water or whatever. So I just do it like this. I cut a little hole in it and then I hang it off of, you know, where I tie this hank. 504 yards merino. Really, really pretty. And it is going to stripe. 
but it'll be a subtle kind of a shift like I've said a hundred times already. It just shifts into the next color. It doesn't just suddenly change to the next color and that is like so fun. I love it. I hope that this is helpful to somebody and that you'll try this technique for the color shifting stripes. I will see you Sunday for the live. Thanks. I love you. Bye.